Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Quite a day in financial markets, not a phrase we use a lot on this show, but a lot happened today and there are massive implications for all of us. Dave Portnoy joins us in a moment to explain what those are, but first some context for what we're watching right now. Last March, as the country began to panic about the arrival of a strange new coronavirus from China, a billionaire called Bill Ackman went on television in an attempt to make America even more afraid than it already was. Our economy may be done at this point, he said. Over, dead, not coming back. Bill Ackman went on like this for 28 full minutes. Terrified CNBC viewers watched slack-jawed as he ranted. Here's part of his performance. Hell is coming. This was a feeling like I've never had. Like there's a tsunami coming, right? The tsunami's coming in. You feel it in the air, right? The tide starts to roll out, okay? And on the beach, people are playing and having fun like there's nothing going on. And that is the feeling I've had for the last two months, okay? And, and my colleagues at work, okay, thought I was a lunatic. We need to shut it down now. America will end as we know it, okay? I'm sorry to say so, okay, unless we take this option. Bill Ackman was afraid, and he wanted you to be afraid. Ackman was especially frightened for the future of Hilton Hotels. Hilton Hotels, Ackman proclaimed, quote, is going to zero, along with every other hotel company in the world. Every hotel is going to be shut down in the country. Every one. Talk about scary. But in the end, not for Bill Ackman. Not long after that appearance, we learned that Ackman's firm had made more than $2 billion from trading in the stocks that many people believed he had pushed down with the hysterically dire predictions you just saw, including Hilton Hotels. So was Ackman's rant on CNBC part of a very dishonest investment strategy? It seemed pretty obvious, so we said so on the air. Ackman's lawyers immediately threatened to sue us. In a long phone conversation later, Ackman swore to us that his public attack on Hilton Hotels had nothing at all to do with his desire to buy hotel stocks at a lower price or with the billions in profit that his firm subsequently reported. There was no connection whatsoever. He promised, and he sounded emotional as he said it. We'll let you assess Bill Ackman's sincerity. We do know that this kind of behavior is common on Wall Street. Ackman himself once attacked the company Herbalife on television. It's going to zero, he once again predicted, in an effort to profit from Herbalife's decline. Pretty ugly. But that kind of thing happens a lot on Wall Street. Hedge fund managers bet money that a specific stock will decline in value. That's called short selling. Short selling has no obvious value to the American economy. Short selling exists for the purpose of enriching the people who do it. Short selling hurts companies, obviously. It hurts their investors, hurts their employees. Ultimately, it hurts our country itself. Yet it continues. No one does anything about short selling. Regulators ignore it. CNBC applauds the brilliance of the people who do it. Oh, they're so clever, those hedge fund managers. In fact, NBC's business channel regularly lends its airwaves to unscrupulous short sellers who use free TV airtime, you may have seen this, to tank American companies for profit. They do that all the time. The last administration did nothing to stop this. The current administration certainly won't. The Biden White House is more tightly controlled by business interests than any administration in history. Virtually every person there is beholden to the finance establishment. What's happening on Wall Street is so clearly awful and so obviously destructive. The question is, who's going to fight back against it? As it turns out, a bunch of guys on Reddit will. It fell to them to push back against the short sellers because no one else even tried. So they did. A group of independent investors in a Reddit group called Wall Street Bets learned that hedge funds planned to short the stock of a fading retail company called GameStop. So the Reddit investors began buying shares of GameStop, and GameStop surged in value, ultimately up by more than 1,000%. The hedge funds, for all their calculation, hadn't seen that coming, and they lost billions as a result of it. One hedge fund lost so much money it needed a bailout from two other hedge funds. Meanwhile, some of the investors on Reddit got rich. But getting rich was not the whole reason they did it. They also wanted to send a message to the hedge fund managers. Here's one of the Reddit guys a man called Justin Speak, explaining. I'd be lying to say if it, there wasn't some pleasure out of the fact, you know, I, I'm a pastor and Jesus tells a story about this rich fool who has an overabundant harvest that's more than he can store. 
And rather than give the excess to those in needs, he chooses to, to build bigger and bigger barns to store it for himself. And rather than share the billions with the less fortunate, they've built bigger and bigger barns for themselves. And so, yeah, I was 100 percent. There was a part of me that thought, well, it will be fun to be a part of this moment, to see this moment where at some level overnight, these investors are losing their investing lives. It's being demanded from them. Uh, and they're left wondering what what they get, what who's going to get what they had prepared for themselves. They've built bigger barns for themselves. Well, that's true not to mention epically enormous art collections. The hedge fund people, in case you haven't noticed, in case you don't read the business press, are very proud of their art collections. Very aggressively, flamboyantly proud, despite the fact that a lot of their so-called art is ugly, overpriced garbage, cheap, garish crap that people will laugh at a generation from now. And that tells you a lot. It turns out that a lot of our financial wizards have awful taste. They're as vulgar as the way they do business. They don't know that, though, because no one dares tell them in a country that worships finance people. They're the kind of rich people who still think Frank Gehry is a brilliant architect, not a scam artist. So people like that, arrogant, lacking any self-awareness whatsoever, understandably generate some resentment from the rest of the population. They pause and say, wait a second, Bill Ackman, and the many people on Wall Street who behave like Bill Ackman, what exactly did you do to make $2 billion? Did you improve anything? Or was it just another sleazy inside deal that the rest of us were excluded from participating in? Tell us now. Please speak slowly so we can understand your answer. That was pretty much the message the Reddit guys were sending to Wall Street. Watching at home, a lot of Americans applauded that message. They feel the same way. But the hedge fund people don't. They weren't happy. People who lose money rarely are happy. But here's what makes the hedge fund managers different from you. They have a lot more power than you. They control the game, so they immediately change the rules of the game. Today, the investment app Robinhood, which is used by independent investors to buy and sell stock, banned its users from trading GameStop shares, as well as from several other company shares. No one even knew that was legal. Maybe it isn't, but Robinhood did it anyway, and they did it under pressure from the hedge funds, who they really work for. So much for the free market you're always hearing about. There's nothing free about it. That turned out to be a lie. Turns out that what Wall Street really hates is outsider trading. The idea that people from outside their world might be getting rich. That's the one sin they can't abide. The management of Robinhood, of course, didn't admit any of this. They can't. They're still posing instead as an outpost of inclusive progressive values in a sea of rapacious capitalism. The irony being, of course, Robinhood is the most rapacious. They sell information they gather from their customers to the hedge funds who use it for their advantage and most customers don't even know. How's that for progressive? On the other hand, they do support BLM. They're against hate and systemic racism. They're for science and they want you to know that. Here's an ad from Robin Hood that ran just last month. Remember when greed was good? When you had to look the part? When you had to pay for a seat at the table? We set out to change it, the way the system works, to put the power in everyone's hands, to make it feel, speak, sound, and look just like you. We all invest every day in ourselves, our communities, our future. We are all investors. <laughs> it's so fun to watch that stuff after the fact. That ran a month ago. We set out to change the way the system works, says Robin Hood. Well, that's for sure. In fact, that's literally true. Robin Hood changed the system at precisely the moment when people from outside the system started benefiting from the system. Sorry, proles, no trading for you. We're locking your account. Other platforms took effectively the same position but felt the need to pretend a little more than Robin Hood did. They justified changing the rules by attacking the very people they were hurting by changing the rules. The communication service Discord, for example, banned users from the Wall Street Bets group from using its platform. Why'd they do that? It wasn't at all because the Reddit guys were beating the hedge fund guys at their own grubby game, and that's not allowed. No, it had nothing to do with that, of course. No, instead, they were banned, according to Discord, because the Reddit guys had engaged in, quote, hate speech. Of course, the Reddit guys were racists. That's why they humiliated the hedge funds. Only a racist would do that. You can laugh if you want, but keep in mind, this is a time tested tactic. It works. That's why they do it. Remember back, if you can, to the Occupy Wall Street protests of more than a decade ago. 
The 2008 crash wrecked an awful lot of families in this country. Many have not recovered even now. People were angry about that, and many blamed Wall Street, and they said so. But rather than address their grievances, some of them legitimate, Wall Street and its countless puppets in the media just changed the subject. So it was right about this point that we started hearing an awful lot about identity politics. We can prove that. In 2011, when the Occupy movement was at its peak, mentions of the word racism in the New York Times, the Washington Post, and the Los Angeles Times skyrocketed. In the case of the Washington Post, which is America's most committed defender of entrenched power, literally owned now by the richest man in the world, mentions of racism nearly tripled at the height of Occupy Wall Street. Oh, and of course it worked. They changed the subject. They're doing that again. They always do that. Always. Over on CNBC, home of the professional short seller, the ones who tell you to sell when they profit from it. They haven't started yet yelling about the scourge of white supremacy on Reddit, though obviously that's coming. It's inevitable. But they started their defense of big finance a little more tactfully than that. The problem with humiliating hedge funds, explained anchor and professional hedge fund shill Andrew Ross Sorkin, is that in the end, humiliating hedge funds only hurts the people who do it. So for their own good, they might want to stop this nonsense immediately. What I'm concerned about is that this is a, a pump and dump scheme that effectively is being cloaked, uh, you know, as Mother Teresa has arrived on the scene. I think there are real underlying issues with the system that need to be resolved. I do not want to protect the system. I, I, I love watching the little guy beat the big guy as much as anybody. But what I wonder is whether uh, these folks trying to, quote, unquote, stick it to the man are ultimately going to be sticking it to themselves. <laughs> they only hurt themselves with their scheme. Not at all like what the guests on this channel do. This is a scheme. And Andrew Ross Sorkin is deeply concerned about this scheme. He's just really, really worried that average people might be hurt by this scheme. He can barely sleep thinking about it. He was so fraught with anxiety last night, he was almost late to Soul Cycle this morning. That's how much he tossed and turned beneath his goose down duvet as he pondered the fate of America's beleaguered middle class, which is hilarious. But even if you were to believe it, it's a little late, honestly. Where was Andrew Ross Sorkin for the last dozen years as the central bank shoveled trillions to Wall Street, thereby enriching a few, devaluing the American dollar, guaranteeing hyperinflation, and of course destroying the value of the average person's savings? Did Andrew Ross Sorkin even notice that any of that happened? The Reddit guys noticed. That's why they're mad. Jenny Yellen might have something interesting to say about all of this. Jenny Yellen ran the Federal Reserve for years, beginning under Barack Obama. As much as any single person on earth, Janet Yellen is responsible for creating the distorted financial system that made the Reddit revolt possible, indeed inevitable. So where is Janet Yellen now? And what does she have to say for herself? Oh yeah, as of last week, Janet Yellen is Joe Biden's Treasury Secretary. Here's what Joe Biden's flack had to say yesterday about Janet Yellen. Is the White House concerned about the stock market activity we're seeing around GameStop? Um, and now with some other stocks as well, uh, including the, the subsidiary or whatever, the, the company that was uh, Blockbuster. Um, and have there been any conversations with the F SEC about uh, how to proceed? Well, um, I'm also happy to repeat that we have the first female Treasury Secretary and a team that's surrounding her and often questions about market we'll send to them. But our team is, of course, our economic team, including Secretary Yellen and others, are monitoring uh, the situation. It's a good reminder, though, that the stock market isn't the only measure of the health of our, econo of our economy. It doesn't reflect how working and middle class families are doing. So as her first answer, Jen Psaki is, quote, happy to repeat that Janet Yellen is the first female Treasury Secretary. Let's translate. Actually, Jenny Ellen has nothing to say about Reddit or GameStop or short selling or even the dangerously corrupt condition of American finance more broadly. She hasn't thought about those things, probably doesn't even care. Jenny Ellen herself has made millions from hedge funds, including from funds that lost money to the Reddit guys. But whatever, buzz off. We'd like to remind you that Jenny Ellen is a woman and so are many of the people around her. These brave leaders have broken glass ceilings. They are empowered. And that's enough. We can't give you an answer. We won't improve your life. But we do have diversity, so you should be happy. That's their position. Has there ever been in all human history a clear distillation of the essence of neoliberalism than that? Probably there never has been. Maybe at this point, people will start to catch on to the game. 
Suddenly people are catching on to a lot of things, it looks like. Looking back, we may see the Reddit guys and their effective defense of GameStop as a kind of turning point in this country's history. Whatever our current system is, it is definitely not the capitalism we were promised. Not even close. One of the rare people in media who understands this is our next guest. He's the founder of Barstool Sports, as well as an independent investor who trades an awful lot online and has done well. Dave Portnoy joins us now to explain exactly what this moment means. Dave, this kind of gets to the heart of what you've been doing under quarantine. And I'm wondering what lessons we can draw from this. What is happening exactly? You know, I've been trading heavily since quarantine started, and I was shocked by this. Uh, I personally did invest in AMC and Nokia. Those are two of the stocks that the Reddit guys and the Wall Street Bets guys were pushing. I believed in the power of the Internet. When I saw what uh, Robin Hood was doing, ironically, Robin Hood take from, you know, take from the rich and give to the poor, even though they do the exact <laughs> opposite, I was stunned. Uh, I think it's criminal. I think there has to be an investigation. I think people have to go to jail. Whether that actually happens, I don't know. But I've never been more convinced about market manipulation and the people, the hedge funds, controlling the game than today. I, I mean, just to wake up and say, hey, you can't trade these stocks anymore. You can only sell them. We are going to intentionally crash the market in these stocks. And everyone who has it, tough. You're going to lose a ton of money. But we're going to save the rich people in the hedge funds Shocking. Like in 20 years of me doing Barstool, I'm not exaggerating, it's the most shocked I've been, and maybe I shouldn't be, but, you know, when you have AOC and Donald Trump Jr., both on the same right. side of an issue, you know something's dramatically wrong. This seems like a betrayal of the basic promise of American public markets, which is they're transparent. It's purely meritocratic. If you, I mean, that's why you've been able to make dough during quarantine. You make a bet, you're right, you win. I mean... How amazing is it to discover that that's not real? It, it, apparently, it's real for them. And, and I love the lectures. You hear it from the hedge funds and the suits, as I call them. But they'll say they're protecting you, and we're protecting you versus yourself, and people don't understand the risk and margin. And then you look at them, it's like, buddy, look in the mirror. You're doing the same thing. The hedge funds are betting against companies. We're betting on them with money and margin. We're doing the same thing. The only difference is we're winning and you're getting your teeth kicked in. And you just said, time out. We're changing the rules. And it's bananas. It, it, it cannot happen. And I saw the Robin Hood guy, Vlad. He's on TV. He's lying through his teeth. There is, listen, the thing that really is scary, Robin Hood, I'm going to give this guy a shred of credit. When he woke up and he said, we're going to halt trading and ruin our, most, our client base, he knew that was the end of Robinhood. Robinhood's done. That company will cease to exist because what they built it on, the day trader, the retail trader, they're never right. going back. So he willingly blew up his company today. He knew that was going to happen. Why? Who's in the back end? Who's pulling the strings? Who's making the decisions? We have to find out. And by the way, it's not enough just to be like, oh, we're going to slap you on the wrist and give you a fine. These are billionaires. They can write billion-dollar checks like we write $10 checks. Somebody has to go to jail for this. This was intentional market manipulation. And it's everyday people. It's just not the Reddit people. I have people right. hit me up all the time. Today, yesterday, they're putting their rent into this. They got caught up in the momentum. And if you lose money fair and square, fine. But nobody was under the impression somebody could just press the stop button and say, guess what? We can crash this stock without you having any say. You can only sell it. You can't buy it. What happened? This is like the movie Wall Street. It's insane. I, I just read a piece about 15 minutes ago that said, and it seemed right, that Robin Hood's real customer is not retail investors like you. Its real customer is the hedge funds. They sell data on trades to the hedge funds, which use it to their advantage. Assuming that's true, did you know that? Well, Do you yeah, think anyone who used that, Robinhood knew that? I, I didn't know that. I did not know that till today. I don't think anybody knew a lot of the things that were going on till today. Um, you know, again, Robinhood was operating under the guise that this is a retail trading platform. A lot of people said, I helped build it because we had all our retail bros, as they call them, going there. They literally, in their bio, said they're going to democratize yeah. trading. 
It's the exact opposite. And now they're saying we're going to go back to normal tomorrow. We're going to let everybody do our normal trading tomorrow. Well, Tucker, what changed? Oh, I'll tell you what changed. The billionaire hedge funds, they got out of their shorts tonight. So what? why is this uh, behavior not risky tomorrow, but it was today? It's because they're being pulled by strings. It's criminal behavior what happened today. Plain and simple, people have to go to jail. Plain and simple. Best description I've heard. I got to ask you before you go, Several weeks ago, you announced you were starting this fund to help businesses, a lot of restaurants that were hurt by the corona shutdowns. You're starting to raise money. How much did you raise and how's it gone? It, we are closing in on $33 million raised, over 200 businesses we've helped. We have over 200,000 people have donated to it. And it's, uh, you know, again, I'm a prickly guy, but it's been, it's been gratifying to be able to help. And thank you to everybody who's donated. We continue to do it, but we're helping uh, a lot of small businesses and a lot of employees and a lot of communities. So it, it actually, it, it's, been, it's been great. It really has. It's amazing. You're, you're like your own federal agency at this point, helping people when others won't. <laughs> I appreciate it. Dave Portnoy, thank you for coming on tonight. Thanks, Tucker.